All right, hello everybody. I know it's been a long time, but I've been doing life, and I had an idea for a new video series that I am going to do. Um, and I just wanted to give all of you an update, and I wanted to start um, doing what I think is my purpose in life, um, and that is coaching. All right, and not life coaching, not financial coaching. Um, these are all things I've thought about in the past. No, it's sports coaching. It's coaching young kids and um, it's trying to get the best out of them because I believe I have information and uh, strategies that are going to help them benefit men uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, etc. Um, so I've spent many years uh, studying the human mind on my own time, you know. I got a degree in economics. I wouldn't say all this qualifies me for coaching, but I'll tell you what I've done is I refereed for five years and um, I had a great mentor and he gave me an opportunity to mentor referees and I realized that I really had a passion for it. So um, I went and I asked him to give me a coaching job and he got me one. And I have now uh, a U10 girls recreational team that I'm going to be coaching um, for my local soccer club. So a great starting point, I'm very excited for that. Um, and so what this video series is going to do is it's going to document my goals for the team, it's going to document my uh, strategy as a coach, my growth as a coach, um, and what we're doing as a team. And so if you want to see what my process is like for building a team, for uh, strategizing for trying to get the best out of my players um you know in, in more than a soccer way you know in a life way um keep watching all right and and stay posted for more videos um anyways though let's keep going into more background um into how i got here where i've been what i've been doing right because i believe the last time i updated i i remember i did one video about a book i was selling so i was in mexico uh learning reiki and um, came back to the United States, um, took some losses in the stock market, started up a book business, um, selling antique books, and that has been pretty good to me, and that's been a stable source of income. And so now that I've um, done that, and I'm gonna continue to do that, um, I have the freedom to spend my time and try to develop this new skill of coaching. Um, but. I also want to say thank you to the book world that I still plan to be a part of for the knowledge it has given me in terms of making social connections and organization um, from a business perspective, because a team really is like a business. Um, you have employees, your, your players are your employees in a business, and your profits are the wins, you know? Um, and of course, I'm, I'm coaching a recreational team. I mean, my real profits are seeing my players develop um, more than the wins, right? But of course, when you see good player development, you're going to end up seeing more wins at the end of the day. Um, so I was doing the book business and, um, I went there, I went there. Um, I don't even know if there's anything else to say. Um, with this series, what I'm going to do, oh, this is what I really wanted to do is just tell you all my process for how hectic setting up this team has been. So if you notice, here's a little wet right here. Um, and uh, my windows are a little wet here. Um, <laughs> we have not had our first practice yet, but our first game is this Saturday, right? So today we were supposed to have our first practice. Um, I look at the weather. We're practicing from 5.30 to 6. I look at the weather. I see from 5 to uh, 7, it looks like there's no thunderstorms. So I text the parents at like 2.40 and I say, plan on having a practice today. Um, you know, if I hear thunder, I'll update and say it's canceled. Um, long story short, I went there. I heard a little thunder. I thought it would stop. Then a couple parents showed up. Then I heard thunder. Then we had to quit. So three parents showed up. God bless them for showing up. Um, but I had to cancel the practice anyways. Then the parents were texting me like, 15 minutes before practice, like, is it on? Is it not? It's like, I already learned so much about communication uh, from this little experience, you know, be ahead of the ball. Okay. If you, if you have a day, here's the thing. A lot of coaches or a lot of people in general are kind of scared to be assertive, scared to 
share, they want they feel like they're being overbearing if they share too much. But as a coach, okay, you you are the apex, right? You have to be running the business um, fully. And so I texted them at 2.40. I should have texted them at 9 a.m. saying, this is my plan for whether we're having practice or not. And then by five o'clock or by four o'clock, when it was just unclear, I should have just called off the practice, right? Because I was sitting in limbo and you never want to sit in limbo. I've already learned that. I've learned that in life in other places, right? But when you're sitting in limbo, there's no decision being made. And when there's no decision being made, there's no results that can possibly happen because results can only possibly happen when you make the decision, right? Well, you'll get results, right? But they won't be the results you want. The decision determines whether you can possibly get the positive results. Um, so that was, uh, that was fun. That was fun. And I also wanted to update, so this whole coaching thing, and, and I want to help people develop their minds to excel, especially in sports. That's, that's the first objective. Um, of course, I want to stretch into other areas and, and, and other age groups. And that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about my cousin. Um, he is an aspiring professional golfer. And I haven't talked to him about this. So I'm not going to mention him by name or anything. But he's been doing a very, very good job. And he is just at the cusp of making the uh, PGA Tour. He's already done Corn Ferry events, Canadian Tour events. Um, but he hit a little bit of a roadblock uh, in terms of progress. You know, he, he, he lost, well, I don't know if he lost any of his confidence, but he was having some negative thoughts, you know, in terms of his golf game. And I am very excited to help him out as well. I've been in contact with him. Um, and, and so that's my other coaching little project that I'm extremely excited about because he's such a dedicated individual. I don't know anybody that's more dedicated than him. He lived in his car for months. I, I don't even, I mean, probably years, um, you know, aspiring to do this dream. And he's so close to that edge, but he just needs that little bit of visualization and, and, and inculcation of greatness believing in yourself that greatness, you know, that you deserve that success, that you deserve that greatness. Um, and what I said to him, well, let me, let me not get into that. Let me not get into that. Cause I don't know if he wants me to share, you know, what exactly I said to him because, you know, we don't all want those things out there. Um, but that's, that's the other thing I'm really excited to work on. I'm, I'm really excited to continue working with him and, uh, provide him with results that can, you know, just show him the power of this whole self-help industry when it's applied in a, I don't want to say godly, but in a, in a positive, in a, but in a practical way, right? Because when we're looking at the spiritual world uh, these days, and when I say, I don't even like using the word spiritual, you know, because it, it just comes with all of this baggage, right? Because the people that I'm studying right now, my mentors right now are the classic ones, uh, Napoleon Hill, Bob Proctor, uh, John Ron, um, and in terms of coaching, I've been following Pat Riley. So those are the people, I'm, and Earl, Earl Nightingale, those are the people I'm following right now. And these people are not people that speak about, you know, this, the non-physical in a woo-woo kind of way. They speak about it in very practical terms because they have definite principles that apply, that you can apply to achieve success, Right. And so there's no, all of the things that they say, you can go out into the world and prove them to yourself. And for me, they've been proven time and time again, because whenever I make decisions to do something, I see the results. Whenever I have the persistence to continue past failure, I see results. Whenever I get discouraged and dismiss that thought and instead visualize something positive, I see something positive, right? And the negative side, take the stock market, what, what was happening when I was losing money in the stock market, right? I expected to fail because I had failed so much already that I was like, I was so discouraged and I was like, these, this trade's failing. This trade's not going well. It did, of course. And I could go back to the stock market. It's not like I couldn't, but I've realized that I just don't want to spend the time. I, I, I still, you know, invest but investing in trading's 
a whole different game. You know, if you want to be a good trader, you can be a good trader. And if you want to be a good trader, follow Greg Manorina, you know, and get his book, The Robin Hood of Wall Street. Get his quant trading system. I mean, you can do it and I can do it, but I'm choosing to do something else now because I felt like I have a passion for this coaching. I felt like I have a passion for sharing knowledge that I believe to be valuable. And this U10 team and my cousin is how I plan to prove that value to you guys. So I'll end the coaching there. If you want to continue listening, I'm going to share a little bit about what I've been doing health wise, what I've been uh, doing. Yeah. Just, just living wise. And um, you know, my whole perspective on life currently. So right now um, you might notice I look very good. I'm in very good shape. Um, I've been going to the gym. Shout out to my friend, uh, Tommy. He got me into the gym and I kind of got him into the gym too. We, we went back and forth. We said, you know, we should probably get back in the gym, huh? And so, you know, he, he got me to a really nice gym and we've been working out. We've been working hard, but we've been optimizing our diet too. And we've been studying nutrition and it's just been a really positive experience. But yeah, I, I'm at, I'm probably at like five, six percent body fat. Um, just, just great shape. And how did I get into great shape? Well, I've experimented with a lot of different diets in the past and I've gone, uh, raw vegan. Well, I haven't, I wasn't raw vegan technically, but I was fully organic vegan, um, for about a month. And that was in 2020. I want to say that was in 2020. Um, maybe it was 2021. And then I went full, uh, full keto, uh, after, Maybe it was before that. I don't know. But I went full keto for about a month and a half. Um, and and why, why did I go that long? I just felt like these were the... Um, that length of time, I felt like, allowed me to get a good grasp of the, of the diet and what effect it was having. A lot of people would say, oh, you got to go six months. You got to go a year. I don't really believe that. Uh, I believe after a month, you, gotta, you get a pretty good idea of what the long-term uh, s- mental state of your diet is going to be. Um, and I quit both of those diets and I went back to a standard American diet, uh, you know, focusing on organic foods, but, um, I wasn't happy with where my health was at, you know, prior to starting to go to the gym again and, uh, being diligent and persistent in that way. So, uh, I decided to try something new. I tried the carnivore diet. I did that for about two months, pretty much beef, butter, bacon, eggs. A couple times I had ribs uh, and I put a little spices on those, um, you know, but, but other than that, uh, you know, pretty much strict beef, butter, bacon, eggs, carnivore and saw great results. Uh, I was 180, I was 183 at my peak. Um, and I'm, I'm five eleven and a half, one eighty three 183 at my peak. So I wasn't, I wasn't obese, but I was almost overweight. Um, and I went down to 167 and a half within two weeks and, um, and I started building back up to one like 70, 175, but then I got a little more body fat on, but the carnivore diet was amazing for me. I mean, in terms of weight loss and the mental clarity that it provided, but my impetus for going on the diet was, well, I want to be as healthy as possible. How do I be as healthy as possibly possible? Get on an ancestrally appropriate diet, right? And so that was really my aim, but I started investigating more and I came to the decision that I believe fruit and other natural sources of sugar, such as honey, are ancestrally appropriate and that humans have well adapted to fit those needs. But I'm not eating any vegetables. Um, I'm not a fan of vegetables right now. And I'm, and again, I'm testing this. I've been back. I went full carnivore for two months and I've been, I've incorporated the uh, fruit and honey back into my diet for about the last week and coffee. I put, I pulled coffee back in. So I was off coffee for, for over like six weeks, probably, um, at the very beginning of carnivore, I, did, I didn't cut it out till a week or two after I started the carnivore diet and I liked life without coffee, but I like better life better with coffee. Let me be clear about that. And when I think about coffee, I think about what some people have said is, um, you know, coffee was introduced to Europe right around the turn of the Renaissance. I mean, really coffee uh, signified a, a turning in human progress. And so pe- some people just dismiss coffee as a drug. Me, I don't dismiss it as a drug. Of course, caffeine is a drug, but I don't even look at like the health benefits of coffee. I just think for me, when I wake up and I have a cup of coffee, 
I'm more productive and I enjoy it and I, and I like it as a part of my day and that's why I've chosen to incorporate it. But for some people it doesn't work for some, I mean, you just got to figure out what's right for you. And that's really what this whole diet journey and health fitness journey has been about for me is figuring out what works for you. Not even just what's right for you, but what works for you, right? For me, maybe it is just, I like sweet shit too much. That's why I brought the carbs back into my diet, but my workouts got better. I was having electrolyte problems on the carnivore diet. Two months in, I was having electrolyte problems. I mean, it wasn't like I couldn't get enough, but I had to consistently feed myself um, higher quantities of salt than I would have liked. Um, I should do a whole nother video on salt. I'm just throwing everything in. I mean, fuck it, right? I'm sorry for saying that word. Um, Salt-wise, I've been studying up on salt, man. I got myself some, some bamboo salt from Insin, I think it is. Purple bamboo salt, nine times roasted. Big fan, big fan. I just have that shit as a snack. Um, but then I've been, and then I'm doing Redmond's. So I'm, I'm keeping myself 100% Redmond's and bamboo salt. Um, because I believe that salt is meant to come with, I mean, although bamboo salt is actually a man-made thing, but um, it increases the mineral content. But I don't think salt is meant to just come in the 99.99% sodium chloride the table salt is going to be presented with all the all the anti-caking agents, all the other bullshit they throw in, right? So, um, that's where I'm at with the diet. So I'm currently, I wake up, um, I'll have a little coffee with some honey in it. I haven't had actually incorporated the fruit back, but I plan to. I plan to add fruit, fruit juice, all organic, no added sugars. Okay, so I'm not a fan of the added sugars. Um, I just think that the carbohydrates um, are improving my performance. I feel better. Uh, so I plan to do this diet for a while, but I've, I haven't had uh, any wheat, any gluten. I'm, I'm pretty much done with that. I think for, I'm maybe I'll have a cheat meal once in a while with the, with the gluten. Um, if I'm really in a special situation, like, I don't know, fuck it. Like the king of some country invites me over for dinner and, God forbid he offers me some bread. I'm going to eat it. I'm not going to insult that guy. I mean, what the fuck, right? So that's where I'm at with that. Um, let's cover the diet, cover the coaching. Um, that's where I'm at right now. I'm excited to keep going. We have our first practice on Thursday, right? So we got rained out today. We got our first practice on Thursday, first game on Saturday. So you can expect an update after the game on Saturday, possibly after the practice on Thursday, probably after practice, because it'll be my first practice. So I'll do a vlog on on Thursday detailing that. I got my little pad right here. I've been taking down notes, been studying, been been being creative in how I develop uh, you know, these kids. And I know I'm going back to the coach in here, but I mean, fuck it, if you're this far in, you're probably gonna stick till the end, right? Um, so young players, no, I should leave this for another video. I should leave this for another video. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll talk soon. I'm going to get back on this. I'm excited to start this video series. I've been in I've been in hibernation people and I've been studying up and I got useful information for all of you and I hope to make these fun but more than anything these are these are about spreading information. These are about um bringing up the minds of the young people but bringing up the minds of the old people too. I'm an old person. I'm 23 now, you know. Um but I don't care how old you are. These concepts deserve to be consistently applied. But I'm here to make it easy for you to bring those in. You know, I'll do the hard reading for you. I will take the notes. I will develop the concepts. I will bring it into a contemporary design so that it's not confusing when you're reading a book from 1927 and they're talking about radio being the number one opportunity for you to go into now. You know, I'm going to update these things for you. And I'm going to I'm going to bring my own concepts in, too, because I believe I've gotten experience from a vast number of unique sources, and I've had the privilege of failing in very unique ways early in life, whether that be the stock market, whether that be love, you know, uh, God forbid, you know, a lot of people know my history with that. Um, I have gained a tidbit from everything, and I'm just starting to connect all these dots to understand how the human mind really discovers its purpose, progresses its purpose, and fulfills its purpose. So 
I hope to see you soon. God bless. Goodbye.